right, uh, welcome back to the second part uh, of the simulation session this morning. Um, we are now moving on with a talk uh, by Daniel Benitez Arana. Um, he's from the University of Valencia, and together with his uh, co authors, we will uh, hear something about a work uh, where. Uh, yeah, where, where the size is actually considered of rooms or diffusers, so something acoustic, acoustics related where size matters. So please go ahead, Daniel, and All start right. with your talk. So hello to everybody. My name is Daniel Benitez, and I come from Spain. And I'm going to be talking about the evolutionary optimization processes for acoustic applications where size matters. And I developed this article with all these colleagues here from the Universidad Politecnica de Valencia, also from Spain. And uh, yeah, I'm really grateful to be here at Internoise to have this chance to talk about this article. So let's get into it. This is a general index of all the topics that we're going to be talking about during this presentation. And I think it's the best way to start is with a brief introduction of the article, which was based on defining uh, optimization processes for acoustic applications in which their size and geometry determine how they behaved acoustically. Um, to do that, we use evolutionary optimization processes, which were implemented with generic algorithms. Um, just to show the efficiency of the process, we studied two different cases with some diffusers and some barriers, just to prove that this algorithm can be used for any acoustic application. Um, all the calculations, simulations, and everything were run under MATLAB. So, all right, let's see some of the theory that was used during the development of this article. So here we have a basic uh, definition of optimization, but in real life, cases are a bit more complicated than that. So sometimes it gets complex to solve them analytically. So a good way to do it is uh, through evolutionary optimization, which is based on an uh, initial population of individuals, for example, the sound diffusers or the sound barriers, that um, uh, represents the first generation of the process and is a set of solutions for a specific problem that is defined with or by one or more conditions. And the optimization process begins when these individuals do not meet the condition and have to undertake a series of transformations to generate new elements. And after that, a selection process is run, and this one favors the best individuals within this new group, so we will have a new generation and the process can be repeated until the condition is met and we obtain a set of the best individuals. So these evolutionary optimization processes can be uh, implemented with generic algorithms, which is a process uh, similar to the one that happens in nature. And to do that, our initial population uh, has to be uh, generated completely randomly to add with enough generic diversity to the process. And after each iteration, new individuals are generated while others are removed. And there are basically two processes to generate new individuals, which are crossovers, in which a new element is created by combining uh, the features of two samples, each of them in a certain proportion, and through um, mutations, in which one of the features of the new element is also generated randomly to add even more genetic diversity to the process. And the amount of individuals that are generated and those that are removed uh, is the same, so the population stays constant. Um, the thing is that in real uh, applications, um, usually we have to optimize more than one function. So uh, this means that the, that the problems are multi-objective. For example, with the sound diffusers, we will want to minimize its thickness and at the same time maximize their frequency response. And with some barriers, we will want to minimize its size and at the same time maximize the isolation that they produce. And we can see how, in general, these two um, goals are typically in conflict. Uh, so, thanks to our multi-objective implementation, we won't find a single optimal individual, but instead uh, several. So we have to look for those uh, elements that are the best or for which there are no better elements for all the parameters, all the goals at the same time. And these individuals will form the so-called Pareto front. And thanks to our genetic algorithm, new individuals will be generated um, out of others, um, progressively moving forward this Pareto front, which is represented by the blue line. So in this animation, we can see how after one generation, this front, this Pareto front is pushed forward. And the red arrow represents the direction for which the um, um, optimization process should evolve. So this was all the theory. Let's see what uh, was actually developed during this uh, article. 
So firstly, um, for we um, define the cost parameters of each proposed case because these are the goals that need to be optimized and also uh, determine the, quant uh, the quality of the individuals that we are uh, analyzing. Um, for the sun diffusers, we will have the depth of the holes and also the minimum frequency that they can act on. And for the acoustic barriers, though, we will have their weight based on the radius of the elements of the barriers and their insertion loss. And we can see how in both applications there's um, always a parameter that defines the physical size of the elements. And the other topic that was developed in this article was the implementation of concepts, which is based on seeing what happens when new elements are generated by changing the size of a sample by making it bigger or smaller using a scale factor. And it works like this. If we have our initial population and we calculate its Pareto form, we will obtain a graph like this with all the individuals. And if we now generate their concepts, we will see how they behave when we make it bigger or when we make it smaller. So if we do the same for each of the individuals in the Pareto front, we will obtain a new population like this. Um, for this population, we can recalcul recalculate its Pareto front. And now we have to uh, analyze a new factor in this implementation, which is the goodness of the concepts. So a concept will be considered to have a, to has a, a great goodness when it has a lot of individuals with the Pareto front. Um, these, uh, individual, these concepts with the best goodness are going to be combined between them to generate new elements that will substitute those concepts with the worst goodness. There are those that have very few or only, even only one element in the Pareto front. So we will have a new generation for which we can recalculate their, uh, their cost parameters and the process can be repeated. All right, so for the sun diffusers, the scale factor was applied in such a way that the deepest hole got a value of 1, and the rest of holes uh, obtain a value between 1 and 0. And here we have an example of a diffuser generated out of a different one by changing its size, by, but keeping the proportion among its holes uh, constant. And we have to keep in mind that although the original diffuser may have an appropriate acoustical behavior, this doesn't mean that the ones generated out of it uh, will necessarily do. Instead, each of, each of individuals in the concept will, ha uh, will behave differently, as can be seen in this graph over here, in regards to the minimum frequency. Um, also, we have to set the amount of concepts that were going to be implemented, because the greater this number, the longer computer time is going to be required. Um, by keeping the population constant, as seen here, the different amount of concepts that are going, going to be implemented are these over here, which therefore uh, means that uh, each amount of concept will have a specific amount of individuals per concept. And here we have um, a couple of examples of two individuals per concepts in the left side, which means 512 different families. And on the right side with eight individuals per concepts, which means 128 different concepts. So for the sun barriers, the, um, the radius were adjusted with this scale factor to generate new elements. And here we have an example of a barrier generated out of a different one by changing the, uh, the radius. And we have to keep in mind that the height of the barriers were not adjusted because uh, these calculations were run through 2D simulations using the FDTD method, as can be seen in the following animation. Um, as with the um, diffusers, each of the elements in the concepts will behave differently. And also we set the different amount of concepts uh, that were going to be implemented, which were pretty much the same as with the diffusers. And here we can see how at some point the different families, the different concepts are not so clearly distinguished after or at some point. So, all right, let's talk about some of the results that we got out of all these calculations and simulations. And um, firstly, for the sun diffusers, uh, we generated a population of 1,024 different individuals and we iterated over 3,000 times, uh, finally reaching a total time of calculation of six hours, which is, for a process like this, is not that bad at all. Um, as a general comparison, we can see in this graph that the cases with black and red dots, uh, this means the cases with 1,024 and 32 concepts, are the most visible ones. The rest of cases with the other colors are not as noticeable because they generated almost the same results at the edge of the Pareto front. And if we keep in mind that the implementation with 1,024 concepts is equivalent to a classical multi-objective implementation, we see that, again, the rest of cases does not, uh, do not make a huge difference for this specific application for sun diffusers. Nevertheless, we have to keep in mind that this, uh, all these results are actually optimal, and we just need to identify which one is the best. 
And to do that, we have to add an additional criteria to the process, which is the stability of the concept. So a concept will be considered stable, not only when it has a lot of individuals within the Pareto front, but also when they appear consecutively to each other. But the thing is that after running all the uh, simulations, we found out that uh, in general, the frequency response presented a very erratic response, as can be seen in these graphs over here. So this led us to deduce that although these individuals seem to meet the goals of the optimization process, they were actually extremely unstable and could hardly be implemented in real applications because with slight changes in their geometry uh, will come enormous uh, changes in their um, frequency response. Nevertheless, there were cases that presented quite stable behavior and that allowed us to group all the results into three different cases. Uh, concepts with poor stability, which is the case that we just explained, concepts with moderated stability, and concepts with very good stability, for which um, a lot of in, uh, uh, their frequency response is quite stable for a large number of individuals. And although not all of them are in the Pareto front, they are close enough to be considered appropriate. Um, just to show the efficiency of the method, we compare these results with individuals that were generated randomly. Um, and to do a proper comparison, we had to use the same amount of uh, individuals in both methods, and that meant um, creating or generating almost 100,000 new individuals. And as can be seen in this graph, the results were practically, practically the same at the edge of the Pareto front, although with some areas where our algorithm produced better results. So for the sound barriers, the first solution took six hours to be calculated, and the second one was twice as long, finally reaching a total time of seven days, which is way greater than the case of the sound diffusers. Um, as a general comparison, we can see that how in this case, for this specific application, for some barriers, each amount of concepts did generate a different uh, Pareto front. And again, if we remember that the case with 1024 elements is equivalent to a classical multi-objective implementation, we can see how our algorithm uh, produced better results, especially the case with 64 concepts, which, is the, which are the, the blue dots. So. Nevertheless, we uh, did a comparison between the different amount of concepts just to have a better understanding of the results that we obtained. And we found out that in general, uh, the goodness of the concepts was very low. Even in the case of 64 concepts, uh, which was, as we just said, the, the case that generated the most advanced part of the front. And surprisingly, the case with 32 concept, uh, concepts presented a very uh, stable behavior. So this led us to deduce that we can approach the optimization process from the efficiency point of view to generate the most advanced Pareto front, or from the stability point of view to generate those elements that are uh, e easier to be implemented in real life. It goes with, uh, it depends on the application. So we also um, did a comparison with some, with individuals that were generated randomly, and we found out that, again, our algorithm produced better results. Um, yeah, let's talk about some of the findings that we got out of, out of all these calculations and, and results and some future lines that could be applied in this article. So firstly, although the Pareto front may be influenced by the amount of concepts, uh, this does not happen in all applications. It happened with the sound barriers, but it did not happen with the sound diffusers. And similarly with the stability, it may be influenced with the, by the amount of concepts, but we need to do more implementations to be sure about this result. Um, also, the different sets of results uh, allowed us to decide which approach fits the best with our application, the stability one or the efficiency one, if we want to generate more stable individuals or if we want to go farther within the optimization. And also that the complexity of the application based on the amount of, amount of genes directly influences the results of the algorithm. For example, with the sound barriers, we only had one gene, which was the radius of the elements. And those results were way greater, way better than the case of the sound diffusers that, only, that had more genes based on the different depths of the holes. But in general, we can say that our method generates better results than um, classic multi-objective methods and random approaches. So we can conclude that uh, this process has proven uh, to be useful for reducing the size of acoustic applications. And for the future, it will be great to implement this algorithm with other acoustic applications, such as loudspeakers or room design because they will, this will be helpful to determine uh, the different limitations, weaknesses, and virtues of the algorithm. A um, uh, good way to enhance the method will be by defining with total precision the cost parameters that need to be optimized, and also the applicable limits and the um, optimal scale factors, which can sometimes be problematic or misleading. So yeah, that was pretty much it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Uh, thank you so much for your attention. And again, thanks uh, a lot to the entire Internoise organization for this opportunity. I'm Daniel Benitez, and thank you so much.